Hey everyone, it's Shawna Young, Occupational Therapist with Mountain Therapy Services. Today I'm talking to you about a question that many of you have been asking me, which is, how do I work on getting my fingers extended? So after a stroke or brain injury, if you're starting to develop plasticity, you may find that you have a stronger reflex towards the grasping position. Um, you have more strength in the finger flexors, the wrist flexors. Um, and maybe this is part of a synergy movement pattern that you're seeing um, where the elbow tends to want to be bent, the wrist and fingers also bent, and you're, you're wanting to actively move out of that position. You're working towards isolation of your muscles here, but you're having trouble kind of getting stuck here in this position. So if you think about it, uh, before a stroke or brain injury or neurological condition that may be affecting your hand, we already have the tendency to flex the fingers, flex the wrists, bring things towards our body, keep them here because, and those require the most strength to do that. We don't do as many activities forcefully extending or resisting um, into extension. So we're used to that. We need that for finger motions, hand motions, carrying motions. And so then after a neurological injury and you have muscle imbalance or flexion synergy patterns, it's even further pushed into more of an imbalance. So today I wanna to talk a little bit about an exercise that is probably missing from your exercise routine. And that is looking at the wrist and the forearm, strength and stability and coordination. So a few things before we get started. One is if you're having any pain conditions like impingement, shoulder sublux subluxation, make sure you're getting that addressed with a healthcare provider who can look at you individually um, and decide if this is appropriate for you, appropriate level exercise for you. Um, secondly, you wanna look at your posture before you start. And there's some things that you gotta keep an eye on. One is that your upper trap um, oftentimes is gonna want to start the, the motions uh, when you don't quite have that balance of movement patterns yet. So you might see the upper trap elevate the shoulder. You might see some abduction of the shoulder in order to start movement and you don't need any of those. So keep an eye here. We're gonna use the tabletop where we have a supported position. Our arm can stay uh, stable on, on the table here. I'm also sitting in a supported chair. The table's about elbow height for me. I'm keeping an eye on my hips and my back to see that my posture is not hunched. Um, when you're in this position, you don't have as much accessibility of movement. Your shoulder's not in a stable dynamic position. And so we wanna keep our, um, our hips level. I like to think about it like a bowl of water. So if you're leaning too far forward, you're tipping the water out, leaning too far back, tipping the water out. So fill the top of your hips, make sure they're nice and level throughout the exercise. And so here's where we can begin. So we have to have some wrist extension to have good quality uh, manipulation, coordination, and strength of our fingers, our hand. We have to be able to have the stable here to be able to support holding an object, manipulating it. And also we need this rotation of the forearm and the uh, radial deviation and ulnar deviation like this motion here. So. These may be things that you're not addressing as part of your exercise program. So let's take a look at those today. So as you put your, your hands on the table here in front of you, go ahead and see, can you lift that, your wrist up off the table? Doesn't matter if your hands or your fingers are flexed or extended, but see if you can lift that hand off the table. If not, then go ahead and see if you can do that in side lying position. Now it may be that you haven't done your stretches yet, so take a look at the stretching and weight bearing video about how to prep your hand for exercise. That would be a good place to start before beginning strengthening exercises, always making sure you have the flexibility before moving on. So in the sideline position, try your best to get that wrist back. You can use your other hand to help you to get the wrist extended and then actively bring you to neutral and bringing back as best as you can. So work towards being able to get 15, 20 reps of wrist extension and side lying position if you are unable to do it against gravity. So just like this. 
And then once you feel like that's easy and you can actively perform that, then what I would encourage you to do is to take your, your forearm or rotate it back to this position with your hand flat on the table. Now, you can put a ball in your hand, and the reason why you might do that is because we have um, a natural pattern of movement where we, with our wrist extension, we have some finger flexion. So, having the ball in our hand helps retrain that our fingers can flex while our wrist extends. Also, you may find it easier to extend the elbow. While we're working through these uh, different synergistic patterns that we have, um, wrist extension and also our forearm pronation are often easier to start with a more elbow extended position and then we can work out of that as that becomes a little bit more isolated and easier to do and as we become more dynamic. So now with the elbow extended, now what you can do is you can um, help your hand, if it still can't come up actively, help your hand to bring the wrist up like this. And then what you're going to try to do is hold it for an isometric hold, isometric strengthening. So trying to hold five seconds if you can, work towards 10 second hold. Your hand, um, your forearm might get, you know, tired feeling, your wrist muscles may fatigue, but try your best and support it if you need. And then we're going to relax. We're going to assist it to come back up. We're going to hold again. We're breathing through the holds. And then we let it drop. Sometimes you might find that you a little bit of feedback, a little bit of pushing against the top of the hand may help you to find that feeling of wrist extension and find those muscles again here. Also, you can try some tapping here. Um, just before the elbow at the top of the forearm, um, below this elbow crease here, on your wrist extensor muscle bellies. Okay, so bringing up, hold, hold, hold. I might, like I said, push against just a little bit to get that feeling of, ah, oh, those are the muscles that I need. I need those to work. So then I try to hold, 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 and I relax. So work towards being able to do 15, 20 reps of these. Good, of holding, good. Hold for a few seconds and relax. Now, once you can hold and you can hold against a little bit of pressure for those, then what you can do, work on actively, actively controlled lowering of your wrist. So that's the eccentric part of the um, exercise progression that you can do. So once you're up here, you're able to hold it isometrically, then you control, lower it down. Okay, you bring it up, hold, 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 and control, lower. Now you'll find that as you're getting better with this, you'll, all, you'll be able to do the active portion of controlled lowering, active raising, active extension of the wrist, And then you can work towards 15, 20 reps of that. Now, here's where you want to try to progress a little bit. So you can take this away to let the elbow bend a little bit more, to have a little bit more flexion in the elbow here. And now try to do the same thing. Can you can control your lower and raise the, the uh, hand again, raise the wrist into extension in more dynamic positions. Can you do it with more bend in the elbow? Can you do it forward? Can you do it at a greater range of motion? Letting the wrist completely drop off the table so you have a greater arc of motion and bring it all the way up. So once you're getting a bigger, um, a better isolated movement here, so you're able to extend the wrist and drop it at a full range, you can do that again, hold it against uh, resistance here. Then what you can do is you can progress towards holding a can of soup or a one pound dumbbell, something lighter and doing the same thing here, okay? So the alternate is uh, wrist 
flexion. So that is the motion of bringing the wrist up this way. Now this is likely gonna be stronger for you and not as much of a difficulty to perform, but we do wanna have the ability to coordinate between the two. And so what you can do here is test if you have that against gravity. You can test if you have that all the way off the table against that full range against gravity. And if you don't, you can, again, coming back on the table, do side lying position here, bringing it in. You can give yourself some feedback, which is to push back against the hand. I'm holding my pressure points to the outside of the hand. Um, on the inside, you might find you have more of a grasp reflex. So bringing it in, okay? Bend, hold against your other hand, trying to push it out. Okay, and then once that's easier, you can do, do those holds. You know, you can do 15, 20 reps, holding a few seconds. Come back to here. Work on bringing the wrist up and doing an isometric hold against gravity now. Can you hold it here? Hold it for, you know, five seconds or so. Let it control coming back down bringing it up. Maybe you need to give a little bit of feedback by pushing with the opposite hand to come down, push back against it to lift it back up into flexion, and then controlled lowering. Again, working towards this active wrist flexion, controlled extension to lower, and then back up. Working towards 15, 20 reps. Again, when that's easier and you have a controlled balance of wrist extensor strength in coordination with wrist flexion strength, then add in that weight component, the resistive component. Lifting the can here, lifting the can with the wrist and hand over the table surface, past the table surface. And now another good way to work on this um, when you're not quite there with the resistive part is just rolling a ball, keeping the elbow in line with your body, letting the wrist drop into wrist extension here, letting it roll over and the fingers open, pulling it back, letting the wrist extend and the fingers close and back and forth. Now, while you're practicing this and you're working on those, the release skills, this is a great time to practice extending your fingers to let the ball go. So once you're better able to, to uh, bring the wrist back into extension, you're holding the ball, can you let go of it here? Okay, pick it up, bring it back, let it go. If you have trouble with that, then try this. Bring it back, you can't quite let it go, Bring it back against resistance of your other hand. And then when you let it go, let it relax, pushing that wrist down. And after it's had that feedback there, sometimes it will relax a little bit more to release. So if you're getting stuck in that release component, try that. And then you wanna actively practice in different planes here of being able to let go. So as your shoulder gets stronger, you can try higher reach. You can certainly try a lower reach here to release down at your feet into a bucket or something like that. And then also another exercise you could do you can get um, a little pole like this or a broomstick. I have TheraBand on mine to keep this uh, this rope that I tied around it stable and uh, from slipping. You could use non-slip um, shelf liner or dice them. And I just tied a string to a dumbbell. You don't even have to use the dumbbell at first. You could use something lighter than this. And um, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be doing a rotating position of your wrist flexion and extension in order to wind this up. So start with something as light as you can tolerate. This is for when you have that active and controlled flexion and extension um, with a little bit of resistance. So I'll show you how this could work. You could also use a weight plate with a hole in it, um, hole through it that you tie it through. So you see I'm working on wrist flexion extension 
my um, shoulders are not hiked up, my elbows are at my side, I can use my unaffected hand to also perform the, mo the motion. Um, and so you just practice reeling it back, reeling up towards you. And like I said, it can be something lower or could, I mean, something lighter weight. And then you can come back down and control it coming down. So another great exercise for practicing that control coordinated movement. Okay, so next I'm going to show you a little bit about forearm rotation. So check this out. So we also need to have forearm rotation. We may have some tightness here um, into being able to bring the palm up, the palm down. Um, again, the pronation, which is the movement of the palm down, oftentimes is easier to start with the elbow extended. So again, I'm going to put my elbow into extension here to start the movement. And I'm gonna to work towards bringing the palm down. So can I do that from a palm up position and bring it down? If you can, then actively help it to do that. Now, once you feel like you are getting the hang of this motion, or even if you just need a little bit of feedback on what you're supposed to do, take your unaffected hand, grasp it over the, the side of your forearm here, bring your hand in a sideline position with thumb up, and try to block your forearm from bringing the palm down. You're trying to rotate it the other way to palm up. Resist it, try to bring that palm down into pronation against the resistance of your unaffected hand trying to stop it. Bringing it down, hold for a few seconds, hold, 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 and back over. You're trying to bring it palm down, hold it against resistance of your other hand, and up. Hold, and up. So here's where you can um, also take a look at your supination, which is your strength in bringing the palm up. So same thing. So can you bring your palm up from a faith, from a palm down position? Bring it up. Maybe you need a little bit of stretch while you're here. And then once you can do that, bring your hand in that sideline position again. I'm using my unaffected hand to hold my forearm still. I'm going to try to bring my forearm into pronation but my affected, my affected arm is going to try to bring it up into supination, palm up, palm up, palm up. And I'm trying to bring it over and I'm resisting. I'm trying to find that strength there. Up, 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 up. Resisting with my unaffected hand. Hold those for a few seconds, three to five seconds or so. up, work towards 15 reps or so. Now, once you can do that with greater ease, you could get something like a hammer or anything that's more weighted on one end. A dumbbell would be another great way to do this. So let me grab the dumbbell. And now you could work on um, turning the palm up and turning it down. Palm up and palm down. Working towards 15, 20 reps of those. Starting with a lighter weight, one pound or so, or a hammer that's not too heavy for you. Again, I'm still keeping my arm supported. I'm watching the positioning of my arm, my shoulder and my elbow. And so now we're gonna look at radial and ulnar deviation. So we also have to have the, the motion um, like this, so bringing the thumb towards the forearm and the pinky towards the forearm. This is an easier one to do, um, starting with your hand flat on the table, bringing it this way. Again, you can try to resist yourself once you get stronger, once you're able to do that with some good reps. You can resist it from the other way. 
You can try to bring the wrist up off the table against gravity. Try to push yourself back down, breathing and holding and back up. And then you can work towards being able to do this with a weight. So So bringing the wrist up. I'm holding on this side so that the longer end is in front while I'm practicing the radial deviation. And then I can do the same. I can hold on the other end and work on bringing it up on the back side, the pinky side. So after you've done these exercises, you wanna practice doing this with meaningful, purposeful activities. You know, like, could you pour water into, pour water into your cup? Can you control it to rotate the forearm to pour the water back in? Practicing here. Again, once you're good at that, in that flex, in the extended position, work on being able to do more dynamic positions. So over here, can you do that? closer to you with your elbows more bent. Um, you can just, you can also practice trying to flip the cup over like this, come back and get it. Number of ways. And then in the next video, part two, I'm going to show you how all of this relates to fine motor coordination as we're trying to progress forward into better manipulation skills, handwriting, package opening, buttons, tying shoes and all of that, all the finger skills that we need for helping us move on from there. I hope you learned something from this. Stay tuned for part two. Thanks.